Kill Switch is an original concept combat aircraft. Primary features include a variable geometry fuselage that provides a broader flight envelope across a range of variable combat missions, vertical takeoff and landing capability for operating from a wider variety of ships and locations, a compact missile carriage and launch system that packs greater lethality in a smaller volume and provides the ability to launch internal weapons across a broader flight envelope. A nose-mounted directed energy turret for engaging targets across a wide field of view and a dual crew cockpit for improving tactical creativity and operational continuity. Kill Switch is designed for operations from large catapult equipped aircraft carriers. Folding wingtips help park and maneuver more aircraft safely in the limited real estate on the flight deck as well as the internal hangar bay. Heavy duty anchor points on the landing gear secure the aircraft to the deck during rough seas and weather as the ship maneuvers. Regular ship maneuvering can easily induce up to 5 degrees of list on the flight deck. Built-in boarding ladder and access systems on the aircraft are designed for high tempo frequent use and reduce the amount of equipment needed on the flight deck. The Kill Switch built-in boarding system consists of a three-segment telescoping ladder and four identical retracting steps. Kill Switch possesses necessary systems for both vertical takeoff and landing as well as catapult assisted takeoff and arrested recovery. Catapult launches are advantageous because they increase the range and payload of kill switch compared to vertical takeoff and landing. The range of a mission can be increased because the aircraft uses less fuel during takeoff. Also, a catapult launch kill switch can take off with a greater payload of external weapons that would otherwise exceed the maximum VTOL takeoff weight. If you think you've seen the kill switch canopy somewhere else, you're wrong but it does mean you've been paying attention to good canopy design in general. The kill switch canopy does follow good function and form for all around visibility and aerodynamics as seen in other aircraft and almost never in other concept jets. But then it takes the concept to a whole new level by using two identical main canopy components which open mirror image on perimeter hinge mechanisms, similar to those seen on the F-35 and other clever existing aircraft. On climb out, kill switch in closed configuration provides the cleanest, fastest climb rate. When greater maneuverability or lift at lower airspeeds is necessary, takeoff and climb out can also be performed in split configuration. Steep climbs to altitude are sometimes necessary to provide sensor and kinetic superiority early in a mission. Although the steep climb itself may be less efficient than a gradual climb, cruising at higher altitude is much more efficient. So, considering the overall length of the mission, the less efficient climb in the beginning may result in more time and efficient cruise, resulting in net greater efficiency and time on station. For increased effectiveness against smaller or highly maneuverable aircraft, the kill switch employs unique variable fuselage geometry. The driving technical concept is how to integrate in a single aircraft the high airspeed cruise efficiency of a delta wing aircraft such as the F-16XL and the high lift maneuverability of a canard forward swept aircraft such as the X-29. The main variable geometry of kill switch is not in the form of swing wings or other aerodynamic surfaces. Instead, the fuselage is where the variable geometry occurs. The two main engine nacelles, to which the main wings are attached, translate 34 inches to the rear and slightly outboard. 34 inches of travel on a 60-foot aircraft does not seem like much, but it makes a huge impact on the configuration and performance of kill switch. The net effect is an aerodynamic channel between the foreplane and the main wing which increases the low airspeed lift and instantaneous turn performance. The variable fuselage geometry also translates the main intake from above the aircraft to below the aircraft for improving engine performance at higher angles of attack. Variable orientation tailplanes pivot from horizontal to vertical to improve lateral transonic stability. 
This pivoting change also improves low airspeed continuity and authority of the primary vector nozzles, primarily in the pitch plane. Greater maneuverability translates to greater controllability at slower airspeeds, which is also useful for tanking from a wider range of low speed aerial refueling aircraft. At low altitude, increased maneuverability helps kill switch more effectively integrate terrain as an offensive and defensive asset. Kill switch is a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Primary VTOL features include 120 degree articulating main nozzles, top mounted auxiliary main engine inlets, not seen in this image, top mounted low profile as seen from forward aspect lift fan doors, forward fuselage lift fan providing downward thrust to two widely separated forward cool air nozzle, high sink rate, widely spaced landing gear. 120 degrees of articulation of the main nozzles means the thrust can be used to decelerate the aircraft on approach as well as assist in translating rapidly fore and aft when in a hover. The top mounted lift fan doors present a very slim forward profile so the lift fan can be utilized at higher air speeds either on approach or during takeoff. Even before the lift fan doors open they begin working. Forward of the main opening during forward flight, a low signature venturi inlet channels airflow from around the canopy into the lift fan chamber. The interior of the lift fan doors is not flat. Instead, it has concave curvature, which channels airflow downward into the fan. The fan door curvature is more apparent in other photos. The bird's eye view of kill switch in VTOL mode shows the relative size and location of the forward lift fan as well as the main engine auxiliary inlets. Both ensure that air used for VTOL is sourced entirely from above the aircraft instead of from forward or beside the aircraft. The large plan form of the kill switch fuselage and wing in close configuration means total wing area contributes to overall lift efficiency even when hovering. The main and forward lift nozzles are widely spaced both fore and aft as well as laterally. One advantage of this configuration is it eliminates the weight and complexity of a separate reaction control system for maneuvering in a hover. Differential thrust and individual control of separate vane systems ensures controllability. The utility of the kill switch VTOL components across a range of gradually increasing airspeed makes utilization of ski jump takeoffs advantageous. It increases range and payload of the kill switch when deployed from non-catapult equipped ships. Although kill switch is a VTOL capable aircraft, tail hook and arresting wire landings are advantageous in four use cases. One, reducing fuel needed for landing, thereby increasing range and or endurance of a given mission. Two, reducing wear and tear on the lift fan and hybrid electric components. Three, reducing heat related wear and tear on a flight deck. And four, when weather or wind conditions make a VTOL approach hazardous. But the landing gear and crew take a beating either way. The Gazer Beam Turret is a directed energy system designed to instantaneously engage a range of threats more efficiently and effectively than kinetic systems such as missiles. The primary reason the Gazer Beam is located on the nose of Kill Switch is to provide the widest unobstructed field of view and transmission possible in both azimuth and elevation. Fuselage or pod mounted unitary turrets would suffer a limited engagement envelope in order to minimize hazards to other munitions and the aircraft itself. As a high altitude manned interceptor, many traditional targets will be below kill switch. However, the location and functionality of the kill switch gazer beam will reduce the threat and presence of enemy unmanned pseudo satellites, high altitude loiter munitions, lighter than air, and other kinds of high altitude systems. Phase array sensors and transmitting systems traditionally located in the nose of a combat aircraft have been distributed in forward and oblique oriented arrays elsewhere on the aircraft fuselage, which is not a disadvantage. Relocating and distributing sensor arrays on the aircraft fuselage reduces the weight 
volume and complexity needed for a traditional aerodynamic fairing in front of nose-mounted phased arrays. Killswitch features a compact missile carriage launch system called Shot Locker that packs greater lethality in a smaller volume and provides the ability to launch internal weapons across a broader flight envelope. Externally, it is characterized by a row of small individually opening doors visible on both the top and the underside of the aircraft. Internally, it is characterized by two rows of diagonally oriented launch tubes located in the center of the fuselage. In this image, Killswitch is simultaneously launching two boomstick short-range air-to-air missiles Guidance is infrared. It is rocket propelled and ranges approximately 18 miles. In this image, Killswitch is launching a twister long range air to air missile. Guidance is multimode RF and IR. Propulsion is rocket initiated ramjet. Range is approximately 100 miles. Don't get too twisted around the axle on the performance of either the twister or boomstick. Their performance is based on anecdotal comparison of emerging technologies and does not represent any leaps in capabilities. Concept designs, they were designed primarily to demonstrate what an innovative launch system such as Shot Locker could achieve. Small individually opening doors reduce aerodynamic disruption, reduce RCS changes during launch, facilitate higher launch airspeed, and reduce energy for door actuation during launch. Twister and Boomstick are designed to be proportional to minimize wasted volume in the weapons bay. This view of the top open doors shows each of the forward eight bays carrying a single twister long-range missile, whereas the aft two bays carry a total of eight boomstick short-range missiles for a total of 16 air-to-air -air missiles. A single door malfunction will not compromise subsequent launches. Impact to radar cross-section and aerodynamic performance of kill switch would also be minimal. Underside doors are the exact same part number and function as the Shut upper doors. At high angles during an intercept or during a turning fight, the configuration of the shot locker reduces the need for complete certain conversion to get a clean shot. During launch, initial accelerating gases escape to the rear and below of the main inlet through lower opening doors, preventing significant ingestion into the main engines. This below and aft view of a missile launch shows the small size and minimum opening provided by the kill switch shot locker system. This view also demonstrates the positional and kinetic advantage of being able to launch a short range missile across the turn circle of a highly maneuverable target. Another advantage of the shot locker design is the ability to eject missiles rearward from the kill switch prior to igniting the missile engine. Two scenarios where this technique would be advantageous include one, launching a missile when kill switch is flying at over Mach 2. Two, at night or during low light, the ability to launch a missile and get away from it before it ignites so as not to reveal the location of the launch aircraft. 